hope it goes better than that. We're live. Hello again, everybody. Good evening. Welcome live to Garber High School and day number two of the Next Era Energy Invitational Basketball Tournament. Todd Miller, Adam Diesel, Horst. We have a great one here in the first of two girls semifinal matchups. Class 2A, number seven ranked, and 2 0 Hooker faces Class A's third ranked Okarchi Club. The Wedding Warriors improving to 9 0 yesterday with a 72 38 pasting of Ripley. Hooker is the defending tournament champion. They will wear the home white and blue uniforms. Okarchi, as you see on your screen, in the purple and gold. Okarchi she will move from right to left, Hooker from left to right. The reigning tournament MVP is Holly Stalder. After last year, the coach's daughter led Hooker to their first championship here at Garber. We're underway, and Stalder and company have controlled the opening tip. Holly Stalder with it to the front court. There was actually Maddie Swayze, the jump sitter. Between the rings with it is Alonda Ortiz as Okarchi starts the game in a man or his own defense. Stalder drives baseline, pulls up from six, back rims it. Rebound underneath to Addison. Uh, Addison arms and that will be a foul on Ma uh, Morgan Maloney. That's her first and the first team foul of the contest with 7.36 to go in the opening period. Okarchi has their first offensive possession. Rother into the front court, tries to drive baseline, gets it down low, posted up a Stover and she backs in and scores. And Okarchi has a 2-0 lead. Lady Warriors with full court pressure for the backcourt. Stalder has the basketball, now cross courts it for Cervantes. Janet Cervantes with a loop pass into the front court. Nobody was there except it's tipped and stolen away. Arms with a steal and then on the exchange of possession, Alonda Ortiz commits her first and just like that, the second foul against the Lady Dogs from Hooker. Last year, they defeated Cash and did Hooker 51-42 to win the girls' championship. Okarchi won the previous two tournaments here in Garber in 2018 over Cash and in 2019 over the Lady Wildcats. Right wing side is Rother. She'll bounce it out front for Vander Eschie. Her three, no good. And off the hardwood, oh, Cervantes has it. And then they're going to call her for an offensive foul. Not a lot of contact, but they said she swung the elbow around. So that'll be another hooker turnover. Their third team foul in the first on Janet Cervantes. So just like that, Hooker down 2 nothing and a chance to have the hole deep in his arms gets the inbounds pass. Right side to Jalen Rother. She drives in and it's going to be called for a travel. Mark Martin and Tom Singh, the officiating crew, along with Dakota Martin and this, the girls' semifinal matchup from Garber. 6.42 to play here in the opening period. 2 nothing in favor oh, of Okarchi and a bad pass by Stalder. Goes over the Okarchi bench and out of bounds. And Adam, this has not been a good start at all for the defending champions. No, and it really falls right into the way that Okarchi girls like to play with their press and then how they also defend on the defensive side of the floor. Good start for Okarchi early. Vandy Eschi inbounds in the backcourt in front of Haley Mitchell on the bench. Into the front court with it is Rother. Back to Vander Eschi right baseline against his own defense. Now to Rother. Catches, fires a three, got it. Jaylee Rother knocks down the three. The run is five straight down for the Lenny Warriors to start the ball game as we played 95 seconds in the opening period. In the backcourt is Maddie Swayze at a foul. And they're going to call a reach on Jaden Rother. That's the first against Okarchi. Early it looks like that they're going to call this thing very tight. Yeah, and Okarchi needs to be smarter than that in their pressure. I mean, just keep pressure and make them speed the game up. Those little reaches like that are not smart. Stalder through the paint, loses it off of her leg, and it's taken away by Addison Arms, her second steal. Arms, two on two, kicks it right side and hustling back as Maloney to tip the ball out of bounds and save at least for the time being a Lady Warrior bucket. 5 nothing Okarchi if you're just joining on buckets by Emma Stover and a three-pointer by Jaylee Rother. 6-10 to play opening period, 5 nothing to score here from Garber. Okarchi will throw into the right corner. Van Der Esche looks and hands it off to Arms who fires a three and a terrible foul. Maloney just fouled a three-point shooter to commit her second foul, and already with a minute 52 gone of the first period, the fourth team foul for the Lady Bulldogs. You know, and early in the season, you know, anytime you, you know, Karchi's had a few more games than Hooker has, obviously, under their belt. Karchi usually starts early, they don't play football, and you can just kind of see, you know, it's been pretty easy so far for Hooker, obviously, with the schedule that they've had, but this is a different team, and just taking some adjustment time to get used to that. Arms misses the first free throw of the contest. Hooker is 2-0. Oh. They have dispatched of Texoma 66-36. And yesterday won by 47 over Ripley, 67-20. Second foul shot is up. That one back rims no good. And they're going to call a line violation against Hooker. 
Should be three shots, right? That's right, yeah. That's what it was. She was fouled on the active shooting. So she'll get one more to try and make it a 6 nothing advantage. Brian Stalder already pacing in front of the hooker bench, and the third one is good. So Addison Arms, there's a couple of steals, now has a point. And Dakota Martin and Tom Singer going to get together on the far side and chat a little bit within ears distance of Brian Stalder. Told you last year, Hooker won their first ever Garber Tournament Championship, 51-42. In fact, they and their male counterparts, the Bulldogs, who beat Garber 46-43, became the second school to win both the boys and girls championships here in the same season in Garber. The previous teams to do it, Okarchi in 2018. As Hooker was set to inbound, they now have stopped play again. 6.06 to go with the opening period. You see the score there on your screen. It's 6-0 Okarchi. Hooker trying to beat that full court pressure. They get it to Stalder, middle of the floor, and Holly beats the pressure. Angles right, pulls up behind the back, and has the bounce pass knocked away, and it's stolen. In the front court with it is Arms, and it's taken away from behind. Stalder got it right back. Now bounces across the way in a foul against Van Der Esche, and that's her second. Or her first of the team's second. Stalder has really started off slow a couple of turnovers for the reigning MVP of this next Terra Energy Invitational. In the backcourt with it is Janet Cervantes, comes to a jump stop, loops a pass left side for Stalder. On the wing is Baloney, gets it down low. It's fumbled, regathered, and Swayze scores. Almost two and a half minutes in. Finally, Hooker's on the board at 6-2. Yeah, great cut there by Swayze. And that's what they need to do. Hooker needs to be patient, break the pressure, and, and get some you know, good offense moved, and, and they'll get an open shot. Rother bounces it down low for Stover. It's poked away, picked up by Jaden Rother. Now they work at top of the circle of Vander Eschi against that zone defense. 5.05 to go opening period at 6-2 Okarchi. Right corner is Rother. She'll put up a three. That one spins off. Nobody boxes out in there for the stick back in the bucket is Jaden Rother. So it's 8-2, to two, the lead back to 6. Okarchi keeps the pressure out of the backcourt. Maloney with it to Cervantes. Just does beat the 10-second count as she bounces it across midcourt to Alana Ortiz. Ortiz then lost it, almost lost it on midcourt. Now throws it away, a terrible bounce pass. Van Der Esche with a steal, spins right in an offensive foul against Sophie Van Der Esche, and that's her second. Not a lot of contact, but it happened right in front of Tom Singh, the official with the baseline. Allison Ugardi is going to come in. She is a junior. Also checking in is Savannah Fisher, a junior, for Brian Stalder's ball club. Hooker really disrupted by this full court pressure here early, yet to get into a sink, and as Adams uh, pointed out, just their second ball game. Down the paint goes Stalder nice. all the way to the goal, gliding, and she lays it in. Yeah, obviously Stalder is a different type athlete. She stands out quite a bit in games like this, and she needs to do more of that and be – more fundamental and be more patient. Arms pass, knocked out of bounds by Maddie Swayze. Okarchi will throw in, leading 8-4 to four with 4.21 to go here in the first period. Glad to have you along for our annual coverage of the Next Era Energy Invitational from Garbert High School. Inbounds pass is stolen away by Heidi Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets it up ahead to Ugardi, who misses the left-handed layup. There for the follow in the bucket, though, is Heidi Rodriguez, and she'll get it and one. They've called the foul on Tyson Indris. That's her first, and all of a sudden, the fourth against Okarchi, and we get a timeout on the floor. All of a sudden, things have tightened up here in Garber. 4-12 to go in the opening period. 8-6 Okarchi from the Next Era Energy Invitational on Squirtle. The High Plains Insurance Agency takes pride in keeping up with many changes in the crop insurance industry and keeping their insurers informed of these changes. The goal is to help each farmer customize their crop insurance to meet their needs. Thanks for your continued business. And remember, call Amy, Carissa, or Danny at High Plains Insurance in Medford and Loyal at 580-395-2447 or toll free at 1-800-346-4056 for a quote today. Are you looking for a bank? Todd Miller, Adam Diesel Horst with you. High atop the court here at the Garber High School Gymnasium. 
It was 6 nothing. Okarchi, 8-2 Lady Warriors, and all of a sudden we'll have an and one from Heidi Rodriguez, the junior, that would cut the advantage for Okarchi down to one. Yeah, Looks like Hooker maybe started to settle in a little bit. Yeah, and, and how well Okarchi started this game. You look up now and, and hit one free throw away, we're, you know, it's a one-point game. That's how quick that can get away from you if you're Okarchi. Foul shot is up, nothing but net, and we have a one-point game. Free throw shooting, Okarchi one of three, Hooker one of one early, and now Hooker will return the favor with full court pressure. They just do beat the count as Jaylee Rother gets a bounce pass in the backcourt. Cross courts it for Jaden Rother. Rother is trapped, and they're going to call a foul. Heidi Rodriguez whistled for her first, and that's the fifth. Foul shooting, Adam, is going to be a real, real factor in this first half. Yeah, and we're going to have free throws quick, obviously, with – Five team and 14 fouls. Endress to inbound, being fronted there by Swayze, bounces it to midcourt. Rother lobs it up ahead and it's intercepted. Rodriguez making her presence known off the bench to Stalder, pulls up from 14. Back rims at left angle. Ucardi with the rebound, dribbles out to Swayze. Thought about a three, now cross courts it for Stalder. It was nearly stolen away, and Holly drives and shoots and scores for the left angle. She has four. Yeah, and just a perfect shot. She Smart got in a little bit closer to an easier shot, knocked it down. Hooker with her first lead, 9-8. Over the top, Jaden Rother gets the inbounds pass, goes with reckless abandonment to the rack. Missed it, but a blocking foul has been called, and we'll have two free throws as the whistle will go against Savannah Fisher. That's her first. Already the sixth team foul against the Lady Dogs with 3.33 to go here in the first period. The lead is 1-9-8. to eight. Yeah, and if Fisher just holds her ground and stays up there, she's going to get the charge call, but she started falling before the, there was any contact. Called a flinch. Jaden Rother at the line, spins the basketball. First one is up, and it back rims it. Okarchi has started off cold, 1-4 from the foul line in a game that pits a top 5 a team against the top 10 to a team. Free throw shooting could be the difference in this one. Second one is up, and that one is much better as she knocks it down. Jaden Rother with three. Here comes the pressure again. It's a 2 2 1, three quarter court trap. In the backcourt, Savannah Fisher leaves it for Ugarde to midcourt for Rodriguez. Up ahead to Stalder, pump fakes and Shoots and scores for the right block off the window. Yeah, and I like the idea about getting the ball out of Stalder's hand as quick as possible, but you can't lose her in the backcourt, and that's what Okarchi's starting to do in the press. Addison Arms had it knocked away from behind. Ugarde with the hustle couldn't quite save it back in bounds. And all of a sudden, once Hooker's been able to get some rhythm on offense, they've been able to really bother Okarchi with their pressure. Yeah, I mean, I think it just took them getting used to the competition. They haven't played anybody, you know, to the level of Okarchi, and, uh, you know, now they just kind of got that rust off a little bit, and they look much more comfortable. It's a 9-3 to three run for the Lady Warriors since it was 6-2. to two. Inbounds pass off Indra's hands. She retrieves it, lobs it down low with a block. Good move. spin move by Stover. Couldn't finish, though. And Stalder has the rebound for the Lady Dogs. In the backcourt to Janet Cervantes. She burns her dribble, gets it to Ugarte, and she's bumped and fouled by Ryan Whitrock, who just checked in. That's her first. Tell you what Hooker is doing, though, that is not good. They are picking their dribbles up with not a lot of pressure in the backcourt. Yeah, they've been lucky a couple times, too, not to get a 10 count, like you've mentioned. Stalder across midcourt with 2.45 to play here with the first period. 11-9, Lady Bulldogs. Cervantes, left side, top of the circle to Rodriguez against the zone. It's like a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Foul line right, Ugardi nice drives. Good bounce pass as she dumps it down low to Maloney, who scores. Morgan with her first bucket. Yeah, and that's just a situation where they're overplaying Stalder to the corner, and Hooker did a good job of getting the high post and getting an easy shot down low. Indris for a three left circle, missed it. Rebound is juggled by Ugarte. She steps through a double team to preserve the possession. Okarchi that time did a much better job attacking against that pressure off the made basket. 13 denied Hooker and a turnover. It was the pass intended for you guarding in the right quarter from Morgan Maloney sails out of bounds. You know, Okarchi just needs to be more patient down on the offensive end. They have a sizable advantage on offense, and, and you know, their theory is get the ball inside and make stuff happen down low, and I'd like to see them stick with that, get the ball down on the block. Swayze checks back in. Alonda Ortiz is out for the first time. Sophia Vander as she is in, also back into the ball game, but a foul as they had a trap of the backcourt. See who they call it against. I think it's against Rodriguez. It is, and that's her second. So now the Lady Bulldogs have two players with multiple fouls. They have eight as a team, and we've played just under six minutes here in the opening quarter. 
So Jaden Rother, who was trapped in the backcourt, and is the only Lady Warrior to make a free throw, or correction, one of two to make a free throw, as Okarchi is two of five in the early stages. This will go to the line. First foul shot is up. Good. She'll get the back end. Okarchi last won the girls' championship in 2019. Kelly Jennings was the head coach then. They knocked off Cashin 41-34. They won it the previous year over Cashin 40-34. Second foul shot rolls home, so Rother gets a pair for the line. The re le uh, lead is reduced to two as Stalder accelerates up the right side, now crosses over, gets into the paint, little out of control, hoist went up and hit the rim, and the rebound to Emma Stover. Stover leaves it up ahead to Rother, back to Stover, left side to Jaden. Rother through the paint, cross courts at right side, Whitrock and air ball and a three. And weak side, Swayze has the rebound with 1.32 to play here in the first period. Into the front court, Stalder, a stop and pop three, it rolls off. Rother with a rebound, that's Jaden. 90 seconds to play here in the first period. 13 to 11, a lot of happening here in the first eight minutes of play. They look for a cutter, Jaden from her sister, or Jaylee from her sister Jaden draws the foul. Janet Cervantes has her second personal foul. Now three different Lady Bulldogs have two fouls. Jaylee Rother will go to the foul line looking for her fourth point. First foul shot is up and she missed it. Okarchi is off to a 9-0 start. They won here yesterday in their first round matchup defeating Ripley. I think I told you that Hooker defeated Ripley. They actually beat Olive yesterday, 67 to 20. Second free throw by Rother, back rims, and down for the rebound is Swayze. 13 to 11. Okarchi's missed a lot of free throws in this first quarter. Into the front court is Baloney, bounces right side. Ortiz measures up a three, it rolls off. Rebound hits about three sets of hands. Okarchi has it, it's not free, and then they pick it back up, and Vanderesche has it stripped into the front court for Hooker. Swayze resets top of the circle with 54 seconds to play in the period. They swing it left. Alonda Ortiz off for of the bench tonight. Bounces left side for Swayze. Out there on her is Emma Stover. Now they bounce into the right block, or left block, excuse me, for Fisher, and it's a turnover. It was knocked away from her. Okarchi putting some pressure out of the low post that time, forces another turnover. Jaylee Rother bounces it out front for Whitwalk. Now to Jaden Rother, diagonally cross courts it. Her sister Jaylee measures a three and stuck it. Boy, big shot for Okarchi. Take the lead right before the half. 14 13, Lady Warriors. 15 seconds to play before half, the end of the first period. I messed you up there. You're okay. <laughs> and a turnover. It's thrown right to Ortiz. To Stover, who goes to the rack. Was out of control, missed, missed the layup. Rebound to Fisher, and then a foul in the backcourt. And that's against Jaden Rother, and that's her second. I'll tell you, the one thing you notice nowadays in basketball, namely in high school, at all levels, what happened to the jump stop? I mean, it's just everything's so out of control. I mean, four or five different opportunities we've seen, you know, in fast break situations where someone can just jump stop and go up, and everybody's just doing everything at the rim out of control. Maddie Swayze. As the inbounds pass, gets it to Morgan Malone, who's tied up. Good play by Jaylee Rother in the backcourt, and that will force a turnover from Hooker with one-tenth of a second to go in the period, and Okarchi leading 14-13 to in this battle of top ten schools. Yeah, and that's a situation where you actually don't really want the jump ball because you would have got it coming out of the quarter, and now you've got point one, and so you can't really get anything off, so you might as well just throw it towards the basket. Whitrock will throw in just a pace or two inside midcourt. She does so, and that's the way the period ends. So Karchi in a game of runs leads 14 to 13 in Garber at the end of one. Back after these messages, it is the Next Air Energy Invitational Tournament presented by Scordal. Excellent security and safety for your account information? Then Bank Central is made for you. When you use our website, bcna.com, you can pay bills, check account balances, download statements, and even manage your debit card. With our mobile app, you can do all that, plus make deposits as easily as taking a picture with your phone. Talk to a CSR at any of our six locations to find the products that work best for your banking needs. 
At Bank Central, we're centered on you. Member FDIC. With over 24 flavors of iced tea, HTO is your new destination for the best premium water and iced tea in all of Oklahoma. Offering around 500 drink combinations and half price tea during happy hour, this is your ultimate tea playground. With a location open in Ardmore and numerous locations coming soon, including the Village in South Oklahoma City, be sure to stop by HTO and experience the best tea you've ever sipped on. Imagine a school with more than 26,000 enrollments per year, cultivating opportunities for students to develop new skills and gain industry-recognized certification. Now imagine a corporate training center that partners with more than five. Eight minutes in the books. Welcome back here to the Next Era Energy Invitational Tournament from Carver High School, along with Adam Dieselhorst. I'm Todd Miller. Okarchi led by six early, only to see Hooker come back and take a four-point lead. Okarchi, though, leads by one at the end of one, and Hooker has the basketball. Stalder, a crossover dribble, gets into the paint, and the foul. See if they call it on the floor on the shot. It's on Sophia Vandereshi. That's going to be her third personal foul. Both teams are into the one and one now. That's the seventh foul against Okarchi here in the first period. They do call it on the floor, so it's a one and one. Holly Stalder with seven paces hooker. Leading scorer for Okarchi in the first period. Jaylee Rother with six points. Stalder, who's been the only lady dog to attempt a free throw, made that in the first period. Rattles the first one in and out. Maddie Swayze, who's been in and out of the lineup, will come in and replace Savannah Fisher. Fisher came off of Brian Stalder's bench here with this appearance today. Second Stalder free throw is up, and it's good. So she has eight to lead all scores, and we have a tie at 14. Full court pressure. Rother jump passes into the front court. Addison Arms all the way to the goal, and she lays it in. The way to attack and press. Now let's see what Hooker can do. 16-14 Lady Warriors. In the backcourt, Maddie Swayze. Dribbles away from a double team. Pass deflected. It was a lazy bounce pass. Okarchi all over the ball as they're on the floor. And we get a whistle and a foul called against Morgan Maloney. That's going to be her third personal foul. So Ryan Whitrock will go to the line for the Lady Warriors. It'll be their final one and one of the contest, at least here in the first half, as that's the ninth Lady Bulldog foul. It has been a foul fest here with the first period plus. Foul shot is up, and it's no good. So once more, the problems continue at the stripe for Okarchi. Hooker into the front court. Swayze bounces it to Ugardi, who scoops it up. She missed it. Weak side of the rebound is Morgan Maloney. She missed it, but she's fouled. It's on Addison Arms. It's her second. That is the 17th foul called in almost nine minutes of play. Here's Morgan Maloney's first shot. It's up, and it's good, so she needs one more to draw Hooker, the defending tournament champions, even with Okarchi. Okarchi again titles in 2018 and 2019 here in Garver. This is the fourth year of this event presented by Nextera Energy. Second free throw is up and down, and we have a tie. Second tie, this one at 16, with 7.15 to go in the first half. Game one of four on semifinal Friday night here from Garber. Left wing side is Rother. Jaden spins, gets back to the wing, lobs it back out high for Jaylee Rother. Jaylee hands it off to Jaden. Rother angles right, being closely guarded there by Alonda Ortiz. Now she'll shoot it across the floor. Jaylee Rother for three, and she's stuck it at the top of the circle. Jaylee hasn't made a free throw. She's 0 of 2, but she's 3 of 5 from long distance. Has a team in game high nine points. And Okarchi's back in front by three, 19 to 16. Ugardi dribbles up near midcourt. Gets into the front court right for Stalder. Holly, cut about a three, was cut off. Good defense by Jaylee Rother. Now gets it to Ugardi on a bounce pass. She slices to the rim and is fouled. She was hacked to the axe, so it'll be two. And the foul is against Emma Stover. That's her first. Foul situation, three for Van Der Esche, Two each on Jaden Rother and Tyson Indras. Three fouls on Morgan Maloney for Hooker and two each on Cervantes and Rodriguez. First foul shot by Allison Ugardi. Back rims. Lead for the time being remains three at 19-16 with 6.32 to play in the first half. 
Second one is up. That one sticks on the back of the rim. Good effort, though, by Maloney as she gets the loose basketball that is tied up. And that will be a turnover because Okarchi has the arrow. Always well, we seeing the Blues for the Lady Warriors for the foul line thus far. Hooker is four of seven with a couple of misses there from Allison Ugardi. 19-16, Okarchi looking for the 10th straight win. Rother moves left, kicks it to Whitrock in the corner. Back to Rother. It's deflated. Emma Stover. It's deflected and run down by Ryan Whitrock. Whitrock to Jaden Rother. Out of control. Loses the dribble. Going around the double team. Up ahead to Stalder. To the goal. Layup is good. Good body control that time by Holly Stalder. Is not to pick up the offensive foul. 19 to 18 is. Hooker is pulled within a, a point with 5.50 to play here in the first half and an offensive foul at the other end. That's against Jaden Rother. That's her third. Correction, that's the second and not the third against Jaden Rother, so that's a good thing. Okarchi wants a timeout. We'll join him. 5.52 to play first half. 19-18 Lady Warriors for the next era energy invitational live from Garber on Scordal local businesses each year, providing a productive and prepared workforce for employers in Oklahoma no, I'll, through customized I'll training. Now, imagine a community resource who believes our business thrives when our community thrives. We aren't just the local Votech, we are Autry Technology Center. The thing with car buying nowadays is just how many options there are when it comes to where to actually get a car. Dealerships, websites, auctions, private sellers, and so on. But knowing exactly where to get your car loan makes it all much less stressful. That's where Communication Federal can help. There's a reason we're known for auto loans around here. Lots of car options and lots of places to buy. Still to come in the other half of the girls' semifinal draw. Cash and Garber tonight at 6.30 right here on score to the boys' semifinals. We'll have both of those for you as well. Garber and Newkirk, a surprise first-round winner, will square off at 7.50. The other boys' semifinal game after this one, 5-10 Ripley and Hooker. Hooker into the front court, and they throw it away out of the timeout. Well, they have just been extremely sloppy of the Lady Dogs with their passes here in the first half. Already nine first period or first half turnovers for Hooker. Five and a half to play before intermission, 19 to 18. Okarchi ranked third in Class A. Wing right, Jaden Rother lobs it out high for Addison Arms. Back to Rother, right side against the zone. She lobs it down low with the right block. Stover backs it, had the ball deflected. It's free on the floor. Stalder picks it up and then lobs it up ahead. It's off the fingertips of Ortiz. Another example of sloppy passing for Okarchi. Down low with it is Stover. Goes left to right, lays it up. It crawls off the rim, no good. And the rebound to Madison uh, Morgan Maloney. 19-18 Okarchi with five minutes to play here for the first half. Stalder bounces it for Cervantes. Kicks it out left baseline to three. In and out. It's a pinballed. Rebound underneath to Maloney. She went over the back, and they're going to call her for a travel. Alonda Ortiz had a three-point ball that was well over halfway down, but rattled out of the cylinders. Okarchi preserves a one-point lead. We go under five minutes to play here in the first half. Rother sets the table right wing side, drives baseline. She had an open bucket, turned it down, kicks it left corner. Jaylee Rother's three back rims. And the rebound to Holly Stalder. Stalder up ahead to Cervantes, steps inside the long arc, 3A out front. Misses that one, the rebound to Okarchi. 4-19 to play here in the first half, 19-18, to Lady Warriors. Rother into the front court, lobs it down low for Stover, got around Cervantes, and over the top, Stalder blocks the shot. Maloney with the rebound. Holly saved a for sure basket defensively for Hooker. Wing right as Ortiz to Cervantes, goes back door and flips it up in an over her head. Janet Cervantes with her first basket. That is now five in a row, scored by Hooker. They lead by a point, 20 to 19 at the midway point here of period number two from Garber. Rother points to midcourt, brings it to the offensive end. Right side to her, to Raven, or Ryan Whitwell. Whitrock, foul line right to arms, swings it left side to Jaden Rother. She'll drive, goes up, there was contact, no foul. Rother with a rebound as she outworked Alonda Ortiz. Down the paint, goes Stover, loses the handle, it's picked up and thrown in by Addison Arms. What did I miss? Uh, not a lot. Some <laughs> missed free throws, some turnovers. Yeah. 
21-20. Back the other way, Ugarte with the layup. It's good. That's actually Ortiz. And just like that, it's back to a one-point hooker lead, 22-21. Did I miss any jump stops? A couple. Okay. <laughs> Emma Stover to a cutter, and that is Arms who's fouled. And that is against, I believe, Morgan Maloney. That's her third and not her fourth. She'll have to come out of the lineup after this first free throw from Addison Arms. Adam, when both teams have been able to get into a half-court offense and slow things down, they've played pretty well, but especially Hooker has not done a good job in his first half of protecting the basketball, valuing possessions with Aaron passes. Well, I mean, anytime you see two teams try to speed the game up by pressing, you're going to see a lot of that. And we talk about the lack of fundamentals in basketball across the board at every level when you watch it. So you get a lot of fouling, you get a lot of sloppiness, and you get a lot of turnovers, and that's kind of what we're seeing early in this game. Arms hits both, breaks a 22-22 tie, and it's 23-22 Lady Warriors. 3.06 to play here for the first half. Swayze in the backcourt to Ugardi against that 2-2-1 press. Into the front court with it is Swayze. Bounces it right side. Ortiz handles it. Another bounce pass knocked away. Ortiz rips it away from two defenders. Puts it on the floor. Just lost the handle. Arms has another turnover. They're into double digits. Jaden Rother slides to the top of the circle. Goes to work right side. Now will slow it down into the Okarchi forecourt. With 2.36 to play in the first half. Arms, who has seven big ones tonight, handles right side to Rother. Down low it goes for Indris, who goes up, and she's fouled. You know, and Indris is a player that was injured last year, tore ACL, and that really hurt Okarchi a lot after she was injured. It's nice to see her back and moving around well. Second foul of the contest against Ortiz. Both teams are over the 10 foul limit, although Indris was hacked to the ax, so she'll shoot two. I believe that she had a really good doctor, I've heard. Would his name be Matt? I think so. I could be wrong about that. Maybe somebody from Okarchi could let us know, but I think that may be the case. I know if I tear my knee, I want Matt and not Adam to work on me. <laughs> Indris hits the first foul shot. Matt is outstanding. We don't say that just because he's your brother and a supporter of Squirtle, but he is one of the best at what he does. Second foul shot, Tyson Indris on the way, and it's good. So we... Now have a three-point lead again, 25-22. That's been the biggest Okarchi has managed since Hooker erased that six-point early deficit. Stalder has it knocked away. Holly picks it up, drives to the paint, bounces left corner. Rodriguez, three, hit the top of the backboard. Wasn't even close. Jaden Rother with a rebound. With 2.15 to play in the first half, Okarchi a chance to build on a three-point lead. Jaden Rother, up high it goes for Van Der Esche. Or correction, that's Indris, and she has the shot blocked. They call a tie-up, and the Pizarro Chanero goes to the Lady Bulldogs. 2 3 to play, first half, 25-22, as you see the score on the bottom of your screen. First of four here tonight for the Garber Tournament on Squirtle. Cervantes having trouble, finally beats the 10-second count to stall their left side, and a foul. Well, Only Stalder's going to go to the line. And that's the last thing you want to do is put Stalder to the line. I mean, that's going to be an automatic two points. So kind of silly there. And you can see Coach Mitchell Ryan, not real happy about that. Ryan Whitlock picks up her second. I thought they were going to call it on Indris. That would have been her third personal. So Stalder is two of three at the foul line. Four of seven before that make are the Lady Dogs. Stalder now has 11 points. Boy, she had a terrific season a year ago, didn't she? Yeah, she's a heck of a player. I mean, obviously, she's going to play at West Texas A&M or will be. She's verbally committed there. I don't know if she's signed or not, but she's one of the top players in, in, in the state of Oklahoma, definitely one of the best in our area of the state. Stalder swishes the second down. It's 25-24 with a minute 47 to play in the first half. Indris sticks a baseline jumper at the other end to get the two back. 27-24 Okarchi. And another turnover. Ball batted away on a cross-court effort. Indris diving to the floor. Rodriguez was there. They're going to call a jump, and Okarchi keeps it. It's a great hustle by Okarchi there. Well, this hasn't been aesthetically pleasing. I think our viewers would agree. You cannot fault the effort and the hustle of these two teams. I mean, they are they're putting it all out there on the floor. Ugardi tips the inbounds. Pass off of arms out of bounds. So Karchi gives it right back with 90 seconds to play in the first half. 27 to 24. 
Stalder bounces into the backcourt. Cervantes, she'll bounce it for Swayze. Swayze then idea. telegraphs a pass and Idris intercepts it. Tyson, and then she is called for a carry. And that's a situation, too, with uh, you see Coach Mitchell trying to explain to her, just jump stop and get a guard to come get the ball from you. Um, the old jump stop, Todd. Yeah, yes, but if we'd <laughs> seen any, I don't know if we have, actually. Maybe a couple. You may have been here for them, though. 27 to 24, 75 seconds to play in the first half. Maddie Swayze needs help. Now puts it on the floor and a timeout called by Brian Stalder, and that is a well-spent timeout as the 10-second count was on. Yeah, you know what I'm telling? If I'm Brian Stalder, I'm telling my daughter, go get the ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, don't have Swayze, a post player, try to bring the ball up the floor. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here, 27 to 24. Adam, we might inform our listeners, and I don't know if you know this. I heard some, some talk about it when I first got here today that Cashin is locked into the evening games tomorrow, regardless yep. if it's the seventh place boys game or if it is a third or championship game appearance for the girls. Is that correct? That's correct. So the Cashin girls, if they win today, they're gonna, they would play in the finals anyway, so they would take the final slot. Uh, the boys, obviously, their JV team has lost both their games. So the actual loser's bracket game will be played the last game. Obviously, Cashin playing in the state championship game tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the football state championship. So uh, Garber's done a great job, and all the teams here have done a great job of accommodating Cashin because they did the same thing last year during this tournament. New Kirk beat Takawa today in girls' play of the consolation side. Ripley over Olive, those two. Play at 110 tomorrow for the Consolation Championship. In the boys' Consolation Finals, it's Okarchi and Takawa. Cashin's JV will face Olive for seventh place. Cervantes will inbound. We are under a minute now to play here in the first half, 27-24. Stalder into the front court. Leaves it for Cervantes to Ugardi to a cutting Janet Cervantes who goes up and she's fouled. And that is on arms. That should be her first. Really good spacing that time by Hooker. It's actually the second foul on Arms. So Cervantes will go to the line looking for a third point. She back rims the free throw. Winner of this will meet the winner of Cashin and Garber. Can Cashin move to the championship game for a fourth straight year? Looking to be a bride and not a bridesmaid. Second free throw is good. And that should be a really good game. Obviously, Garber's going to be shorthanded with Ashlyn Light being out. She broke her foot, uh, but we'll be back after Christmas break, but it still should be a good game. 27 to 25, Okarchi with 41 seconds to play first half, and Jaden Rother draws an offensive foul. She pushed off against Heidi Rodriguez, and that's the third on Jaden Rother. You may be the only person that's been involved in this game because they called me for one while you were gone that has not been called for a personal foul. <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't know the call I took. It might have been a personal foul. 36 seconds to play in the first half Man. and another turnover. Bad pass. Ugardi saves it inbounds, and then they compact the matter with a foul in the backcourt. And I'm kind of surprised there they called the foul on 35 because I really think it was Stalder who reached in there. That's who I thought they were calling it on. Instead, it's Cervantes, and that's her third. That would have been the first on Holly, so I think her dad, Brian, would have taken that call. Yeah. Addison Arms, Mr. First Two, has hit her last three at the line. We'll go to the strike. That's the one time you don't want to act like you're not guilty, right? Right. When you have zero fouls, 30 seconds to go. 15th free throw of the first half, and it is converted by Addison Arms. With that make, they have now made 9 of 15. And have started to shoot much better for the charity stripe of Okarchi in the second period. This to push the lead to four. It would be their biggest since... It was 6-2, or 8-2. Second one is up, and it's good. 29-25 with half a minute to play in the first half. Stalder handling the basketball. Jump passes to Ugardi right side. Allison slides to the baseline. Now looks for a cutter and finds her teammate Fisher wide open, and she lays it in. Yeah, great play, great offense there. 15 seconds to play in the first half, 29-27. One okay. shot here if you're Okarchi. Well, you would think they would. Rother with the screen out high, moves left on the baseline. It's Endress, and they throw it away with two seconds to play in the first half, and a foul in the backcourt. Oh, my goodness. 
Wow. With six tenths of a second to play, Tom Singh blew the whistle. And it's going to be three free throws on a heave that was barely going to get beyond half court. I don't think that was a shot. I think it was a pass. I think she was passing to the player out in front of her. Well, that's what they're talking about. Dakota Martin and Tom Singh talked about it. Now Mark Martin comes over. They're calling the foul on out Addison Arms, and that's her third. They're going to call that a shot. I do not agree with that. Heidi Rodriguez at the line for three. First one, no good. She needs the next two to tie the game going into the halftime locker room. I mean, Tom Singh is one of the best officials to have ever done it, but that's a time you might want to hold off on blowing your whistle with .6 on the clock from three-quarter court. When Second we, free throw is good. When there's already been 25-plus fouls called in the first half. So she gets two of three. This Rodriguez, who has five. We're tied at 29 with six-tenths of a second to play here in the first half. Rother will get the inbounds pass, and she will hold it. Okarchi led by one at the end of one. We're tied at 29, heading to halftime. Back in a moment from the next era Energy Invitational from Garber High School on Squirtle. But only one choice for an auto loan. Communication Federal Credit Union. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like video on demand, restart TV, and replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Visit gopioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. Eubank Haney Law Firm is proud to be a fan of high school sports. Andrew Eubank and Caleb Haney believe that clients deserve better. At the end of the day, that's how they measure true success. Their experience, confidence, and integrity ensures that your case will be handled in a reasonable, efficient manner, regardless of the legal situation you are facing. Get out of line and come to Eubank Haney Law Firm in Enid, Fairview, and Laverne. Call 580-234-4334 when winning is everything. Electricity, that's what we've been about since 1936. Since then, Cimarron's mission of bringing electricity to its members has been nothing short of successful. But over the years, it's become more than that. It's about powering our neighbors heating in the winter, keeping the lights on at the ball field, and keeping your phones charged to capture those special moments. We are proud to be part of your community. Thank you for being part of Cimarron for all of these years. Blazer Bling offers a huge selection of trendy and affordable styles, providing customers with the best shopping experiences since 2016. Stop by the store and check out the new fall items. Located at 408 Main Street, Garber, Oklahoma. You can also shop our website at blazerbling.com or over on the app, available on Apple and Google. We offer fast and free shipping on all orders over $50. Blazer Bling, come and see us. Is your school or booster club looking for ways to fundraise? Let Downtown Threads create a custom website to showcase all your school apparel. You pick the design and the garment, we do the rest. We will handle all the payments and cut you one check when the website is closed. Call today, 580-237-7060. Downtown Threads, proudly supporting all local high school athletes. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Diesel Horse Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Diesel Horse get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do but it's not all that we are. We care, we'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. At Bellamine Company, we know agriculture. Every day we actively value, market, and sell farmland and farm equipment. We also provide comprehensive insurance products for crops, farm equipment, and farm liability. 
This provides us a true understanding of the rural way of life, resulting in a better service for our customers. There is a difference. We'd be honored to show you. Find out more at callbellamy.com. That is callbellamy.com. When you're in the market for a new truck, what typically goes through your mind? Hi, it's John Johnson at Johnson's the Kingfisher. Is it make, the model, and from where? The Ram 1500s and 2500s are outstanding trucks, so it might just be the dealership you choose. At Johnson's of Kingfisher, our auto family has been providing Oklahoma families with quality trucks and great customer service for more than 90 years. Not many dealerships can say that. Come meet our family and take advantage of the great pricing on new Ram 1500s and 2500s during the Ram Power Days at Johnson's of Kingfisher. Yes, sir. You simply can't beat the Ram 1500s and 2500s. Hi, it's Jeff Johnson here at Johnson's of Kingfisher. The 1500s and 2500s are Hemi-powered, designed for comfort, and programmed with the latest technology. Start by first having a look at the new 1500s and 2500s featuring Ram Power Day pricing at johnsonsofkingfisher.com. Then come meet the kind of dealership found in a place like Kingfisher. From the short to our award-winning service department, find a friendly auto family right here at Johnson's of Kingfisher Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Same name, same family since 1927. I'll take it whenever you're ready. I'll take it whenever you're ready. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Back in Garber at halftime, girls semifinal game number one, class 2A number seven, two and oh hooker, and class A number three and nine and oh Okarchi nodded at 29. Scoring at halftime, Jaylee Rother has nine points, Addison Arms has nine. Five points from Jaden Rother, four at halftime from Tyson Endress, and two from Emma Stover. Ten of 16, Okarchi at the foul line. In fact, in the first half, the two teams combined for 19 of 30 free throw shooting. That in 16 minutes of play. 12 points from West Texas A&M commit Holly Stalder at halftime. Nobody else with more than four for the Lady Bulldogs. Morgan Maloney has four points but three fouls. Heidi Rodriguez came off of the bench, contributed four. Janet Cervantes has three fouls, three points, two points apiece from Alanda Ortiz, Maddie Swayze, and Savannah Fisher. We are at halftime. Both teams still in the locker room. We're about a minute away from the tip of the third period. Tied at 29. The second half is coming up next from Garber here on Scordle. When you're in the market for a new truck, what typically goes through your mind? Hi, it's John Johnson at Johnson's oh. the Kingfisher. Is it make, oh. the model, and from where? The Ram 1500s and 2500s are outstanding trucks, so it might just be the dealership you choose. At Johnson's of Kingfisher, our auto family has been providing Oklahoma families with quality trucks and great customer service for more than 90 years. Not many dealerships can say that. Come meet our family and take advantage of the great pricing on new Ram 1500s and 2500s during the Ram Power Days at Johnson's of Kingfisher. Yes, sir, you simply can't beat the Ram 1500s and 2500s. Hi, it's Jeff Johnson here at Johnson's of Kingfisher. The 1500s and 2500s. Back in Garber, 29 apiece as halftime festivities wind down. Coming up next, it's boys semifinal action at number one. That will be Ripley. The Warriors take it on the Hooker boys. Hooker, the defending champions of this event, led by Todd Kerr. They knocked off the host school and the favorite last year, Garber, 
46-43. Hooker went on to have a really good season, Adam, but they kind of fizzled a little bit towards the end, I think, surprising to most people that had covered them that year. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously they ran into some teams that I think ultimately were better than them. Um, but, you know, I mean, 2A girls is tough last year, so – I think they got a really good shot this year because the, the field is kind of leveled out a little bit more, and I, I see them probably making a deeper run. Left side, Stalder. Hooker has the first possession of the third period, and Stalder knocks down a three. 32-29, that's the biggest advantage for the Lady Dogs in this contest. Early third period, Rother drives right baseline. Jaden lobs it back out high to arms against the zone defense. Right corner, Jaden Rother. Side steps to the foul line, now spins down the paint. Good defense by Alonda Ortiz, and the jumper is good by Jaden Rother. 32-31, the exchange of buckets. Leave Hooker in front by a point, 45 seconds deep into the third period. They go over the top, and Maddie Swayze handles a pass. Now resets out front. Cervantes to Stalder. She drives to the baseline, scoops it up off the window, and hit the backboard. Bound away. Stalder fights for the rebound, goes back up, missed short. And Rother has it for Okarchi. They trailed a moment ago by three. The Lady Warriors can retake the lead with 70 seconds gone here in the second half. Wing right is Vander Eschy. She'll leave it for arms. It goes up, and she's fouled. Sophie Vanderes, she is back out to start the second half after picking up three fouls in the first half, most in the first period. Alonda Ortiz will pick up her third personal, and that's the first of the second half. Again, the two teams combined for 30 free throws in the first 16 minutes of play. First foul shot is up, and that one is good. Arms is at the line for the eighth and ninth time. In the first half, she made five of seven. Toledo Karchi in that category. She now is the double figures, the first warrior to become a double figure scorer this one today. Second one is up, and that one is clean. 33-32, that's four straight put up on the board by Okarchi after the three-point basket by Stalder had given Hooker a three-point lead. Midcourt, Maloney pulls a pass away, drives, bounces it for Swayze, it's poked away, it's off of a leg, and finally run down by Cervantes at midcourt. Janet pivots, needs some help, but a short bounce pass gets into the hands of Ortiz. Now to Stalder. That's who you want had knowing the basketball. Cervantes bounces it down low. Swayze kicks it back to Janet. Bangs her way to the goal. Shoots high off the glass. Missed it. Swayze stick back with the left hand. Is a little too strong. And Jaden Rother, the sophomore, has the rebound. Jaden speeds up the right front court with under six to play. They'll trigger a three. Jaylee Rother from the top of the circle, and she missed it. Stalder, one hands down the rebound. Now throws it up ahead to Cervantes. They didn't get back. Cervantes lays oh. it high off the glass, and she missed it. Yeah, just great outlet there by Stalder, but obviously Cervantes just, you know, didn't use the jump stop. Just over the rebound, they clear to the front court with Jaden Rother. She's gone primarily all the way at point guard for Okarchi tonight. Five and a half to play third Better period. Get rid of it. Rother needs some help and just throws it away. Was looking for the cutter. It's Vander Eschi. She overthrew it. Stalder, one on three, back the other way. Loses it off of her leg. Picks it up. Fires from five of the baseline. Missed it. Swayze, stick back is good. It's actually Maloney. Morgan Maloney has six. Yeah, and credit Hooker. They're just hustling now. Getting the loose balls and hustling on the rebounding end. Great play there by Stalder. Rother had it taken away from behind by Stalder. She's turned up her energy. Up ahead to Maloney for three. Ooh. In and out, no good. Jaden Rother at the foul line with a rebound. Under five to play in the third period. It has been a good one after a slow start by Hooker where they trailed by as many as six. They lead by one, 34-33. Jaylee Rother. Well, cross court at Vander as she measures a three. It's off the front rim. Rebound tipped, and Stover has it in the right corner. That'll give Alcarci another possession. Nice Vander Eschi all the way to the goal for the layup. Great take by Vander Eschi, and that's there, too. Alcarci really hasn't done a great job of attacking the basket, and they need two more here in the second half. Four straight by the Lady Warriors as we ride the seesaw. It's 35-34. Four to half to play here in the third period of girls' semifinal number one. Cervantes, a bounce pass, gets it down low, back it in and scoring to Swayze off of the glass. It was a good, strong, physical, low post move by Maddie Swayze. 36-35, right baseline, Stover, they trap her, she kicks it out. Now they swing at the Vander as she top of the circle. Left side to Julie Rother and a bumping foul against Stalder, that's her first. Second against the Lady Bulldogs at the midway point here in the third period. 
one thing I give Stalter credit for is a lot of games that we've called of her, she's very aggressive and gets a lot of fouls. And only with one foul, she could be very aggressive in the second half. Uh, with her length and her athleticism, she could cause a lot of disruption here in the second half for Hooker. Savannah Fisher comes in for Hooker. Also checking in is Heidi Rodriguez. She was big off the bench of that early come back effort with four. Vander as she backing her way down, is cut off elbow right, needs some help. Uh, Hooker at his own defense. They work it down low with a block, spin move, no good, Stover, loose ball, foul. That's against Hooker. Already three fouls against the Lady Bulldogs, and that's the second on Savannah Fisher. So only Holly Stalder and Allison Ugarte have played for the Lady Bulldogs that don't have at least two fouls in this ball game. Again, 30 combined free throws of the first half. Here's Emma Stover's first foul shot. It was flat. First miss, three trips to the line of the third period for Okarchi. This to draw him even at 36. It would be our fourth tie. And first here of the second half, and she back rimmed that one. Good job of boxing out by Hooker as Stalder runs down the rebound. Yeah, and he's missing free throws. Valcarci is going to come back to haunt him in a one-possession game like Stalder, this. Stalder, a good bounce pass down low. Fisher, though, lays it in. High off the glass that rattled on the cylinders and stayed down. 38-35, Hookers equal their biggest lead. Van Der Esche cross courts at left side for Rother. That of Van Der Esche. One dribble to Jaden left side. Rother to Indris out high. Tyson spins, goes Man. right through a double team, lays it up, it wouldn't drop. Well, that would have been nice for Okarchi if she could have got that one to drop off the window. Instead, it's foul number three on Heidi Rodriguez. Yeah, Coach Mitchell does a great job with her post players as far as fundamentals go. A great job of squaring up and you know, attacking the basket there by her post players. You don't see that a lot nowadays. Indris was two of two at the foul line of the first half. She remains perfect as she rattles the first one home. A second here would pull Okarchi within one. Okarchi has been just dominating their first nine opponents. Won yesterday 72-38 over Ripley. Second foul shot, back rim. Stalder tips the rebound. It was off of an Okarchi player's back. That's Rother and saved in bounds by Stalder. Foul. So a two-point game and a foul in the backcourt. That's against Tyson Indris. That was a tackle on Savannah Fisher. And you like her being aggressive, but obviously you got to know that you can't go through the player to get the ball. So. Third foul against Tyson Indris, the junior, coming off that knee injury last year. They get it down low, spinning, coming up short of Swayze for the right block. The stick back hit the bottom of the basket, but Swayze for the third time pays it off. Four-point hooker lead, their biggest of the night, 40-36. to 36. And they're doing it just out hustling Okarchi, you know, getting loose balls, getting rebounds. Um, you know, not really running offense. It's just more of a out hustling. Fisher called for a push in the back. That's her third of the fifth against Okarchi. Both teams were into the one and one before the end of the first quarter, and many times shot double bonus in the first half. Lady Warriors will throw in underneath their own basket, down 40 to 36. It's their biggest steps of the night. And Stalder with the interception. Stalder is off to the races with Van Der Esche, the only defender, and she lays it in. 42-36. Hookers equal the biggest lead of the ball game, but now a steal from behind. Rodriguez picked the pocket. Now leaves it for Maloney into the front court. Stalder, a good look at a three. Got it, left corner. Haley Mitchell needs a timeout, and she will take what? 2.35 to play, third period. Hooker, 45. Okarchi, 36. Back after these messages from the 2021 Next Era Energy Invitational on Scordal. Units are Hemi powered, designed for comfort and programmed with the latest technology. Start by first having a look at the new 1500s and 2500s featuring Ram Power Day pricing at johnsonsofkingfisher.com. Then come meet the kind of dealership found in a place like Kingfisher. From the showroom to our award winning service department, find a friendly auto family right here at Johnsons of Kingfisher Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Same name, same family since 1927. When you're in the market for a new truck, what typically goes through your mind? Hi, it's John Johnson at Johnson's of Kingfisher. Is it make, the model, and from where? 
The Ram 1500s and 2500s are outstanding. Holly Stalder has exploded eight points in the first five and a half minutes of the third period, and Hooker is out to a nine-point lead, the biggest for either side here in the second half, 45-36. Jaden Rother drives baseline and a bumping foul. Can't do that. Heidi Rodriguez was too close, riding her into the paint, and that's Heidi's fourth. Next foul will send Okarchi to the line for a one-and-one. Substitutions, Rodriguez will check out. Allison Ugardi will come back in. Tyson Endress, who was subbed out by Haley Mitchell during that timeout, is back in. Jaden Rother will inbound left baseline. Endress, fall away, jump shot, and she caught it. Well, that's a tough shot by Tyson Endress and a much-needed Lady Warrior basket. 45-38 and a turnover the backcourt. Stalder threw it away, trying to cross-court it for Ugardi. 45-38, Hooker. This thing is a long ways from being decided with 10-14 yet to play. Jay Lee Rother will inbound for the purple and glad, uh, gold-cladded Okarchi Warriors. Out high is Indra. She'll spin to the elbow of the stripe to Rother. Cross-courts it from right to left for Jaden Rother. On her is Ugardi. Ugardi stays with her. Rother drives baseline, turns the corner, lays it up and a foul. Maddie Swayze has picked up her first. Seventh foul in 6-0-2 here in the third period against Hooker. Jaden Rother will be at the line looking for her eighth point. She has a bucket to her credit here in the second half and had a free throw to that total as she hits the first. Winner of this game will play the winner of Cash and Garber. You can see that game later tonight here on Scordo from Garber. Second free throw is up. That one spins out. Down for the rebound is Maddie Swayze. 45-39, a little 3-0 run out of the timeout by Okarchi. Swayze with the left hand beats the time count, beats and breaks it across midcourt, now a staller between the circles. She stands on the big G logo for Garber. Dances with it, now looks for Ugardi, a backdoor cut, and it's off of... Allison's leg out of bounds. Ugardi's got to handle that pass. That's an unforced mistake right there. Another one for the Lady Dogs. 126 to play, third period. Todd Miller, Adam Dieselhorst with you from Garber. It's 45-39. Stover with it is trapped on the right baseline. Whips it out to Jaylee Rother. Straight on for three, no. Swayze high off the iron for the rebound. To Maloney. Morgan to midcourt up ahead of Ugardi, and she is... Hit hard and fouled inadvertently by Emma Stover. Her momentum took her right into the back of Ugardi and good sportsmanship by Emma to help her up off the floor. Cervantes is in, Fisher is out. Janet will inbound underneath for the Lady Bulldogs. Bounces it for Swayze, who pushes it past to Maloney. Cross courts it for Ugardi against the Okarchi zone. A minute five to play. Holly Stalder will back it out late third period. Ugardi now a minute to play in the third. Hooker leading by six. Down low with it is Swayze. She goes around the defender. Indris overshot the basket. Good low post defense by Tyson, and Okarchi has the rebound. Chance to extend a little run here. Ryan Whitrock, run off the arc, throws up a wild left-handed shot, and that's a bailout whistle. She did kind of get bailed out there. That Maybe. shot had zero chance of going in, and Tom Singh said, nope. So foul on Maloney, and that's her fourth. You know, one thing from Hooker that's causing the issues, you're obviously getting the points and the activity out of Stalder, but Swayze is kind of their next player. And then obviously the Maloney kid too as well. And between those two, they just have 10 points. You know, you usually see one of those two scoring in, you know, the 10 to 15 point range. And so pretty impressive where they're at right now with really not getting a whole lot out of either one of those girls. Ryan Whitrock's first one is good. Second one is nothing but net. And all of a sudden, that lead, thanks to five straight by Okarchi, is down to four. Out of the lineup comes Morgan Maloney, a starter who has four fouls. Stalder will get the inbounds pass, returns it to Cervantes. Now they beat the pressure, but to the floor, it's Maddie Swayze. Goes all the way around two defenders, lays it up. There was contact, no whistle. Rebound, Ryan Whitrock. She's tied up as she goes to the floor. Okarchi will keep it with 32.6 seconds to play in the period. 
And this is exactly what Okarchi wanted. Obviously, got getting down by nine points there, and they've made this run here to close the gap to four. And it'd be great if they could just go one shot here and get a bucket and cut it to one possession. Into the front court is Jaden Rother. Right of the paint to Indris. Draws a double pass. team, funnels it to Stover underneath. She was wide open and missed it. Hooker tips the rebound. It's on the floor and out of bounds. And it was last touched by Tyson Indris, who was diving. It seemed like that time, too, that Stover may have gotten fouled underneath. But uh... Swayze oh, in the no, backcourt had it attention. knocked away from behind by Jaden Rother. Rother with the left hand to the goal. Contact, no whistle. Missed everything. Cervantes with a rebound to Stover. Two seconds, nice. one second. Ugardi had a shot, instead gave it up, but they Man. will not get the shot off before the buzzer expires. 45-41 Okarchi. Down by four, but a moment ago it was a nine-point Lady Bulldog lead. Back to Garber for the final eight minutes in a moment here on Scordle. Are you looking for a bank that provides excellent security and safety for your account information? Then Bank Central is made for you. When you use our website, bcna.com, you can pay bills, check account balances, download statements, and even manage your debit card. With our mobile app, you can do all that, plus make deposits as easily as taking a picture with your phone. Talk to a CSR at any of our six locations to find the products that work best for your banking needs. At Bank Central, we're centered on you. Member FDIC. With over 24 flavors of iced tea, HTO is your new destination for the best premium water and iced tea in all of Oklahoma. Offering around 500 drink combinations and half price tea during happy hour, this is your ultimate tea playground. With a location open in Ardmore and numerous locations coming soon, including the Village in South Oklahoma City, be sure to stop by HTO and experience the best tea you've ever sipped on. Imagine a school with more than 26,000 enrollments per year. Just saw that ad for HTO. Anybody coming from Oklahoma City, SOS is out. Bring me an unsweetened blueberry iced tea, please, with fruit. Eight minutes to go. Ty Miller, Adam Dieselhorst with you in Garber at the Next Energy, Next Era Energy Invitational. 45-41. Of the 45 for the Lady Bulldogs, 20 have been scored by Holly Stahl. They're much more balanced in Okarchi's offense, arms with 11, nine from Jaylee Rother and eight from her sister Jaden. Tyson Indris has seven as well. First possession to Hooker to start the third or fourth period and Cervantes took steps. That was all because of the hustle from Tyson Indris who's really turned up her efforts here in the second half. 7-41 to play in the ball game, 45-41. Can Hooker win, have a chance to defend their title from a year ago? Jaden Rother spins, gets into the paint, kicks it left circle, open three. Jaylee Rother, no. Rebound was poked away by one of the Okarchi players away from the much smaller Alondra Ortiz. Stalder picks it up, attacks right, goes behind the back and a foul. And that's against Jaylee Rother. That's her first. That's the third against the Lady Warriors here with 7.21 to play in the final half, a final period. Good boys game coming up. Hooker and Ripley will have it right here for you on Scordel. Lob pass, Maddie Swayze right side, drives in, and a good play defensively turned in. Jaylee Rother knocked it away and probably saved the basket. Now they finally get it to Stover, nearly turned it over as Jaden Rother sets the table out front. Under seven minutes to play in the ball game, 45-41. Rother, bounce pass, knocked away. Cervantes saves it inbounds to Ortiz. Alanda up ahead to Ugardi, who runs it down, and now will settle with a half-court offense. Cervantes, a jump stop out front to Stalder, straight on for three, misses long. Rebound yanked away by Emma Stover. Good physical rebound to Jaden Rother. Right side, Whitrock for three, rolls off, no good. And the rebound, last touch by Okarchi out of bounds. And Okarchi is just trying to get the lid off the rim right now. It seems like it's been an eternity since they've scored at 45 to 41. has been the score for quite a while here. Tell you what, your football team goes deep into the playoffs. It's tough to come right out of football into basketball and play a tournament like this, but that's what both hookers, boys and girls are doing. Stalder with a left hand glides to the air. Good decision by Indris just to let her go. Yeah, and just another, you know, it just shows Stalder's level of athleticism. I mean, just going up with the left hand 
Very impressive. She's got 22. Jaden Rother spins left wing. Jump passes down to the block for Whitrock. Goes up, and it's ripped out of her hands. Another turnover this time. Ortiz with a steal. Under six minutes to play from Garber. A six-point hooker lead. In transition is Swayze. Goes to the rim. Offensive foul. That's a good call. Maddie Swayze was going to the rim come Hacker high water. And the defender knew it and stepped in front of her. That's Emma Stover to take the charge. And once again, if you're a hooker, and you get the ball in the front court, get the ball to number 11. She should be touching it every possession. 5.51 to play of the ball game. Ninth team foul against the Lady Dogs here in the second half. Maddie Swayze was called for her third. Down low with the basketball. Stover, a good spin move as she got around Swayze, who had to let her go, and she lays it in. She'll have an and one to reduce this game down to a three-point contest. And Swayze, who thought she let her go, made enough contact to pick up her fourth. Timeout, 5.47 to play from Garber. It's a four-point lead for the Lenny Bulldogs, 47-43 from the next era invitational tournament on Squirtle. Opportunities for students to develop new skills and gain industry recognized certification. Now imagine a corporate training center that partners with more than 500 local businesses each year, providing a productive and prepared workforce for employers in Oklahoma through customized training. Now imagine a community resource who believes our business thrives when our community thrives. We aren't just the local VOTEC, we are Autry Technology Center. The thing with car buying nowadays is just how many options there are when it comes to where to actually get a car. Dealerships, websites, auctions, private sellers, and so on. But knowing exactly where to get Holly Stalder with 22 points, the reigning tournament MVP, trying to shoot her club back into the championship game with an opportunity to repeat. The first since Okarchi did it in 18 and 19. And and one out of the timeout for Emma Stover is up, and it's no good. So Stover's 0-3 at the line today, 47-43. Approaching five and a half minutes to play. Stalder with the ball in her hands, brings it across midcourt. Holly with Jaden Rothe throughout there on her, drives around her, now draws a double, bounces it left side for Ortiz. She'll bounce it down low. They trap Savannah Fisher with a quarter. Now out front for three, Ortiz missed everything. Good hustle, though, by Maddie Swayze with four fouls to run down the rebound. Back to Ortiz. Hooker can afford to work the clock and get a good shot, leading by two possessions. Just over five minutes to play. Stalder says, I'll take this. Misses back rim on a three right wing, and Van Der Esche with a rebound. And that's probably really not the shot you want with five minutes to go. I mean, obviously, you want her taking the shot, but you could probably get something easier than that. Jay Lee Rother gets a handoff. Now to her sophomore sister, Jaden, out front. Foul line right in this. Move. Good move to get around Swayze. Lays it up and missed it. Front rim it, did everything but finish, and Stalder with a rebound was being ridden towards midcourt by Jaden Rother, and then a bad pass by Stalder. She threw it I down say it was on, on Stalder. She'll get the turnover, but really, Ortiz has to go after the basketball. Yeah, did you see who made that catch down there? Hall of Famer Sherry Myers. I did not. Down here on the end, she yep. made the catch. I did. Didn't She's surprise anybody, right? No. She still probably got it, right? I know I'm she sure can she coach. Does. <laughs> former Kingfisher girls coach, former Okarchi head coach. One of the best to ever do it, either in boys or girls basketball in the state of Oklahoma. 4.35 to play. Jaden Rother, top of the circle. Gets a screen, moves left, tacks left. Down the paint, misses the layup. Swayze with the rebound. Has to play smart with four fouls. Maloney up the left side, jump passes for Swayze. Right side to Stalder, bangs her way in, scoops it up. Almost lost the handle, I think. More than a shot. Rebound to Endress, who's tied up, and it will belong to Okarchi. I'm surprised there, too, that they didn't call a reach foul because I, I really felt like Hooker. I, I, I kind of felt like Hooker's been – they've been, been on ten fouls for quite a while and been kind of lucky. Yeah. Hooker's missing an opportunity to put Okarchi away. And then I just called that. And, and a foul against Janet Cervantes. And that's going to be Cervantes' fourth personal foul. Double bonus now for Jaden Rother. Hooker with Okarchi getting good looks but failing to pay them off has squandered an opportunity. Now Rother can cut into the four-point deficit and she misses the first free throw. 
I believe they've missed three or four free throws in a row now. McCarchy has. This will be the 29th free throw Jeez. for Okarchi this ball game. For 16 of 29. Rother is 5 of 8 as she hits that one. It's a one possession game. Cervantes in the backcourt. Bounces it for Maloney with four minutes to play in the ball game. Middle of the floor, Cervantes. Now she'll bounce it back out to Stalder. Brian Stalder, both Haley Mitchell and Brian Stalder working on their respective benches. Right front court is Holly Stalder. They swing it left side for Janet Cervantes. Cervantes spinning, holds it high. Gets some help for Maloney. Driving left, Stalder shoots from 14, airballed it. Rebound out of bounds, and it was last touched by Swayze. I'm going to tell you, if I'm Brian Stalder, I almost make my team shoot layups now. The yep. clock is your friend. You're up three points with three and a half to play. You have the opportunity to dictate the tempo of this game. Yeah, and, and honestly, you know, Holly's really took two quick rush shots. I mean, she's obviously the one you want shooting it, but like you said, you know, probably not a forced jump shot or a spot-up three-pointer. Uh, you know, when you've got a three-point lead, the other part about that too, Todd, is, is Karchi's got three fouls, so even to get in the bonus, they're going to have to foul a bunch. Allows Karchi to be aggressive on the defensive side. Good point. Addison Arms comes back in for the Lady Warriors with three and a half minutes to play. 47 to 44, they bounce it in the right low post, Stover, she's tied up, and that's going to be an Okarchi turnover. And look who on the floor was making the play, Morgan Maloney with four fouls. Yeah, great hustle there, both sides. Good look. Maloney on the cross-court pass, drives to the rack, no resistance, she missed the wide open layup. Arms with a rebound, knocked to the floor, and we'll have Okarchi free throws at the other end. Now they're going to call a jump ball. Okay, it's still Okarchi basketball. <laughs> if you're Brian Stalder, you will take that at this point with your opponent now well into the double bonus. I don't know. The way Okarchi shoots the free throw, you might want to put him at the free throw line. 309 to play of the ball. Good Came luck. out of high Stover. Good look down low Ooh, to nice. Van Der Esch. He whips it left, and it's out of bounds. Jaylee Rother just didn't expect the pass. I think she was setting her feet to take the shot, and she just did not look for it right, you know. Isn't that the equivalent of running before you have the reception in football? <laughs> yeah, like putting the cart before the horse. Three minutes to play in the ball game. Ooh, Cervantes into the front court, left side hey, Maloney. There we go. They get it down low. Good look, and Swayze pays it off. Stalder with the assist, 49-44, 2.46 to play. Rother drives baseline right. Freeze Indris up for three, barely drew the front of the rim. Rother with a rebound, fall into the floor, kicks it out of the baseline, and Jaylee Rother knocks down her fourth field goal. There's still a lot of time here, so Karchi doesn't want to panic. We just need to keep pressing, and Hooker's made enough mistakes tonight. That Cervantes to the goal, misses a layup. Karchi the rebound, down three. Van Der Esche, a half-court pass, goes to the goal, layup is good. It's a good play by Van Der Esche because she went right at Swayze who could not challenge her with those four fouls. 49-48, 2.05 to play, and Cervantes is in trouble in the backcourt. And for the other end, Brian Stalder calls for a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. 2.05 to play, 49-48 our score. We thought this would be a good one, unbeaten, Class 2A number 7 hooker, Class A number 3 and 9 0 Okarchi. I don't think either team wants to win the game. It has been, you know, but you see this early. We talked about this, you know, and either one of these teams have you know, probably faced the same comp kind of competition. Obviously, Okarchi's played Lomega, a very good team, and, and had a big win there. But, you know, we know Hooker hasn't played anybody like Okarchi yet. Uh, but at the same time, very sloppy, lots of fouls, lots of free throws, lots of easy missed shots, really, in all honesty. But if I'm Hooker here, there's one thing I'm doing. I'm getting the ball to that girl right there, Holly Stalder, and I'm saying get out of her way. Uh, you know, if they're going to foul, we, that's who you want at the free throw line, obviously, and you want the ball in her hands at all times. Okarchi does not have near the foul trouble that Hooker has. They don't have a play with more than three fouls. Morgan Maloney has four, Maddie Swayze has four, and Janet Cervantes has four for the Lady Bulldogs. 49-48. Okarchi has come climbing back. After it was 45-36, it's a 12-4 Lady Warrior run. And they are primed to 
send the defending tournament champions into the third place game. They need a defensive stop right here. Hooker will throw into the backcourt with Janet Cervantes. And it is Stalder that gets the bounce pass. She immediately gives it up to Morgan Maloney. Maloney dribbles to the near side. They cover up Stalder. Holly comes back, gets it now to Cervantes. The pass is deflected. Maloney gets it. It was almost 10 seconds, too. Left side, Swayze with a basketball. A minute 45 to play. 49-48. Rodriguez out front. Bounces baseline right. Oh. Swayze with a basketball, and she threw it away. Threw it right to Jaden Rother. To the goal, and a blocking foul. Well, it looked like she was set. Mark Martin, though, underneath the basket. Said she was not, and that's the fifth on Morgan Maloney. Well, I mean, obviously the offensive player made the contact, but Maloney didn't seem to have her feet set. Six points for the first half for Maloney. Here comes Allison Ugarte, and she will substitute for Maloney. May not be the final Lady Dog that is disqualified with fouls. We told you before that they had three with four fouls. Jaden Rother to the line. Why not? She's been there eight times, has paid off five of those. Needs two to put Archie, uh, Oak Archie in the front, and she misses it. So the best they can do is a tie with a minute 35 to play. You could tell she was nervous on that. She thought way too long about it. You know, that, I don't know if that's her common free throw routine, but. They have a lot of veterans playing. There's Haley Mitchell, but she's the youngster, a sophomore. It's one of two. We're tied at 49. They set the full court press. 90 seconds to play. In the backcourt with it is Swayze. Touches it to Cervantes. There you go. Get it into Stalder's hands. 119 to play. We're tied at 49. Hooker has had a nine-point lead exhausted here in the second half. Oh, man, that was Lob tough. pass. You guarding the Stalder. Bang! She hits it just inside the arc left wing. 24 for Holly Stalder. Just a big shot, obviously. Just... 51-49, down low with the basketball. Whitrock, and she scores. Yeah, that was tough. And I'm Correction, denying, that's Emma Stover with the basket. And I'm denying Stalder the ball. Don't let her get it back. 46 seconds to play. We're tied at 51. Stalder has it right side. They double her. They force her to give it up to Ugarde to Cervantes, who lays it in. Wow. Nice How about offense. that? Janet's first basket at him since early in the ball game. Yeah, great offense there by Hooker. Good ball movement. They had Stalder double teamed and found the post wide open. Haley Mitchell wants a timeout for the far side. 36 seconds to play, 51-49 Hooker. And it's a 60, so we'll join them back in a moment from the Next Era Energy Invitational from Garber on Scordle. Our loan makes it all much less stressful. That's where Communication Federal can help. There's a reason we're known for auto loans around here. Lots of car options, lots of places to buy, but only one choice for an auto loan. Communication Federal Credit Union. Team up with Pioneer iVideo and start streaming the most popular TV shows and movies from your favorite devices today. Download the iVideo app and start watching anywhere in your home using Pioneer Internet. Each package includes free high definition and cloud DVR features like video on demand, Restart TV and Replay TV, just in case you forget to record a program. Come back after this. Visit track. GoPioneer.com for more details and compatible devices. Some restrictions apply. Eubank Haney Law Firm. You know, it used to be, Adam, that you didn't see a lot of pre-Christmas tournaments by football playing schools. Now almost everybody gets one tournament in before Christmas and New Year's, and again, this is the case with Hooker. Their football team went into the second round of the playoffs, so they got a lot jump, and uh, they're being pushed by an Okarchi team that is playing their 10th game. Yeah, I mean, you, and you get a mix of that. You know, Garber made a good run in football this year, too, as well. Ripley does not play football. Okarchi does not play football. Uh, you know, Olive, I, I believe, played football this year, but I don't think they made the playoffs, so it's kind of a mixture of teams and different things. And you could tell the rustiness from a hooker early, but they seem to really kind of turn around since the first quarter. Sophia Van Der Esche to inbound directly below us in our broadcast position high atop the high school gymnasium here in Garber. Beautiful new facility. Hadn't been open very long. 53-51 is our score. The inbound right quarter, Tyson Indris. And she pushed off. Cervantes and Ugardi trapped her, and she pushed off. Indris with her fourth personal foul. And that is a killer 
And now you've got a foul in a hurry because that's only your fourth team. Addison Arms will come back in for Okarchi. Cervantes will inbound, bounces it to Stalder. Holly, two on three, kicks it left quarter. Rodriguez very wisely pulls it out to Cervantes to you guarding. You better foul, and they finally do. That's only their fifth. Jaylee Rother will commit her second personal foul. The key for Hooker, get it inbounds. They're going to have to foul you. They do. Foul. Cervantes to Stalder. And why are you not fouling? It took almost five seconds, and it cost Jaden Rother her fourth foul. Well, I think they tried fouling right in front of Mark, but maybe they didn't get any body on it or any, any part of the arm. 53-51. So. 20 seconds to play. Cervantes bounces it for Stalder and a good foul. Jay Lee Rother made a play on the ball. That's her third, and that's the seventh now against Okarchi. So with the exception of that prolonged five or six second foul, the Lady Warriors did a good job in quickly getting Hooker into the bonus after they had just three fouls going to the fourth period. Yeah, she's the last person you want to foul. You'd almost want to double her and foul somebody else. Stalder at the line, hits the front end, she'll get the bonus. She's made four straight at the line, five of six. This is a big one because it makes it a two possession game with 19 seconds to play. Free throw is up and that one is good. Stalder gets a pair, now Hooker will back off, pick him up in, mid, in the uh, front court. Okarchi will roll it as far as they can. Oh Rother gosh. picks it up and the diamond is Rodriguez. She has the ball and it's a turnover. The arrow favors Hooker. Wow. That is an underclassman mistake by Jaden Rother and a heads up play by Heidi Rodriguez, who Adam has had a bunch of those off of the bench today. Man, you know, you're trying to save some time, I get that, but obviously you don't want to wait until the defender is literally within arm's distance of you before you pick the ball up. Uh, there's a lot of silly mistakes by Okarchi in this really about start of the mid, mid of the third quarter and through the fourth quarter, they just have been off. They've missed a lot of free throws. They've made a lot of silly mistakes. And Hooker, give them credit, they've able to, been able to capitalize on it. Well, they have the one player out there that can take advantage of your mistakes almost every possession, Holly Stalder. Holly Stalder has made nine field goals today. She has 26 points. Was the MVP here at the Next Era Energy Invitational a year ago. Game two of our quadruple header coming up next. Boys semifinal action, Ripley and Hooker. The other girls semifinal will follow Cash and Garber. The nightcap, the surprising Newkirk boys knocked off Okarchi. And they will take on the top seed, the Garber Wolverines. Okarchi beat Olive today, talk one. Consolation boys play, knocked off the cash and JV. Girls consolation action, Ripley over Olive and Newkirk over Tonkawa. Here we go, Hooker will inbound as they get it to Swayze who's promptly fouled by Emma Stover, that's her third. And that time Okarchi double team stalled her. I like that by Coach Mitchell, very smart. 55-51, Hooker needs both ends of the one and one here from Maddie Swayze who is going to the line for the first time. She is a junior. Has fought through foul problems today. First one is up and it's no good. Rebound to Jaden Rother. Good job of sealing it out by Okarchi. Rother turns the corner left, loses the ball. It's picked up by Stover. She is tied up by Ryan, or excuse me, by Maddie Swayze and Okarchi keeps it. The time is ready out, 7.2 seconds to play. Jaden Rother to inbound, it's a four point game. Arms catches and shoots on the baseline, missed it. Rebound out of bounds with four seconds to play. It'll stay with the Lady Warriors. Jaden Rother will trigger it in again to her sister Jaylee for three straight on. It's no good. That'll do it. Final score, Hooker 55. Class A third rank, no longer unbeaten Okarchi 51. We'll be back with our scoring totals in a moment from the Next Era Energy Invitational right here on Scordle.
to be a fan of high school sports. Andrew Eubank and Caleb Haney believe that clients deserve better. At the end of the day, that's how they measure true success. Their experience, confidence, and integrity ensures that your case will be handled in a reasonable, efficient manner, regardless of the legal situation you are facing. Get out of line and come to Eubank Haney Law Firm in Enid, Fairview, and Laverne. Call 580-234-4334 when winning is everything. Electricity, that's what we've been about since 1936. Since then, Cimarron's mission of bringing electricity to its members has been nothing short of successful. But over the years, it's become more than that. It's about powering our neighbors heating in the winter, keeping the lights on at the ball field, and keeping your phones charged to capture those special moments. We are proud to be part of your community. Thank you for being part of Cimarron for all of these years. Blazer Bling offers a huge selection of trendy and affordable styles, providing customers with the best shopping experiences since 2016. Stop by the store and check out the new fall items. Located at 408 Main Street, Garber, Oklahoma. You can also shop our website at BlazerBling.com. Back to wrap up our first game here of the day from the Next, Inter Next Era Energy Invitational where Hooker has punched their ticket to tomorrow's championship game, moving to 3-0 as they will have a chance to defend their championship from a year ago, 55-51. They overcome an early six-point deficit to beat Okarchi and hand the Lady Warriors their first loss of the season. 26 points from Holly Stalda, the leading scorer, eight points from Maddie Swayze. Bowing out with six points today was Morgan Maloney. Five from Janet Cervantes, four points apiece from Savannah Fisher off of the bench and reserve Heidi Rodriguez and two from Alonda Ortiz. Hooker was 11 of 17 today for the foul line. Three of double figures for Okarchi. Lead of the way was Jaylee Rother with 11. Also Addison Arms with 11. Jaden Rother had 10 points, seven from Tyson Idris, four each from Sophia Van Der Esche and Emma Stover and two points from Ryan Whitrock. How about this? 18 to 31, Okarchi at the foul line. Okarchi led by one at the end of one. We were tied at 29 at halftime, 49, 40, or 45, 41 hooker at the end of three. And the Lady Bulldogs win their third straight to start the season, 55, 51. We'll take a break, be back with the starting lineups and the tip off of boys semifinal number one. Coming up next, it is Ripley and Hooker right here on Squirtle. <laughs> 